Fick's laws of diffusion describe diffusion and were derived by Adolf Fick in 1855. They can be used to solve for the diffusion coefficient. Fick's first law can be used to derive his second law which in turn is identical to the diffusion equation. Fick's first law. Fick's first law relates the diffusive flux to the concentration under the assumption of steady state. It postulates that the flux goes from regions of high concentration to regions of low concentration, with a magnitude that is proportional to the concentration gradient, or in simplistic terms the concept that a solute will move from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration across a concentration gradient. In one dimension, the law is where is the diffusion flux, of which the dimension is amount of substance per unit area per unit time, so it is expressed in such units as, measures the amount of substance that will flow through a small area during a small time interval, is the diffusion coefficient or diffusivity, its dimension is area per unit time, so typical units for expressing it would be, is the concentration, of which the dimension is amount of substance per unit volume. It might be expressed in units of, is position, the dimension of which is length. It might thus be expressed in the unit, is proportional to the squared velocity of the diffusing particles, which depends on the temperature, viscosity of the fluid and the size of the particles according to the Stokes-Einstein relation. In dilute aqueous solutions the diffusion coefficients of most ions are similar and have values that at room temperature are in the range of 0.6 x 10-9 to 2 by 10-9 square meters per second. For biological molecules the diffusion coefficients normally range from 10-11 to 10-10 square meters per second. In two or more dimensions we must use the del or gradient operator, which generalizes the first derivative, obtaining where j denotes the diffusion flux vector. The driving force for the one-dimensional diffusion is the quantity which for ideal mixtures is the concentration gradient. In chemical systems other than ideal solutions all mixtures, the driving force for diffusion of each species is the gradient of chemical potential of this species. Then Fick's first law can be written as, where the index I denotes the ITH species, C is the concentration, R is the universal gas constant, T is the absolute temperature, and mu is the chemical potential. If the primary variable is mass fraction, then the equation changes to, where is the fluid density? Note that the density is outside the gradient operator. Fix second law. Fix second law predicts how diffusion causes the concentration to change with time. It is a partial differential equation which in one dimension reads, where is the concentration in dimensions of length minus 3, example, is a function that depends on location and time, is time, s is the diffusion coefficient in dimensions of length 2 time minus 1, example, is the position, length, example. In two or more dimensions we must use the Laplacian, which generalizes the second derivative, obtaining the equation example solution in one dimension. Diffusion length A simple case of diffusion with time t in one dimension from a boundary located at position, where the concentration is maintained at a value is, where ERFC is the complementary error function. This is the case when corrosive gases diffuse through the oxidative layer towards the metal surface is semi-infinite, starting at zero at the surface and spreading infinitely deep in the material. If, in its turn, the diffusion space is infinite, then the solution is amended only with coefficient one-half in front of N0. This case is valid when some solution with concentration N0 is put in contact with a layer of pure solvent. The length is called the diffusion length and provides a measure of how far the concentration has propagated in the x direction by diffusion in time. T. As a quick approximation of the error function, the first two terms of the Taylor series can be used. If is time dependent, the diffusion length becomes. This idea is useful for estimating a diffusion length over a heating and cooling cycle, where D varies with temperature. J 
Generalizations 1. In the inhomogeneous media, the diffusion coefficient varies in space. This dependence does not affect Fick's first law but the second law changes. 2. In the anisotropic media, the diffusion coefficient depends on the direction. It is a symmetric tensor. Fig's first law changes to, it is the product of a tensor and a vector. For the diffusion equation this formula gives the symmetric matrix of diffusion coefficients should be positive definite. It is needed to make the right-hand side operator elliptic. 3. For the inhomogeneous anisotropic media these two forms of the diffusion equation should be combined in 4. The approach based on the Einstein's mobility and T or L formula gives the following generalization of Fick's equation for the multi-component diffusion of the perfect components, where are concentrations of the components and is the matrix of coefficients. Here, index is i, j are related to the various components and not to the space coordinates. The chapman enskog formulas for diffusion in gases include exactly the same terms. It should be stressed that these physical models of diffusion are different from the toy models which are valid for very small deviations from the uniform equilibrium. Earlier, such terms were introduced in the Maxwell-Stephen diffusion equation. For anisotropic multi-component diffusion coefficients one needs a rank for tensor, for example, where I, J refer to the components in alpha, beta equals 1, 2, 3 correspond to the space coordinates. Applications Equations based on fixed law have been commonly used to model transport processes in foods, neurons, biopolymers, pharmaceuticals, porous soils. Population dynamics, nuclear materials, semiconductor doping process, etc. Theory of all voltammetric methods is based on solutions of Fick's equation. A large amount of experimental research in polymer science and food science has shown that a more general approach is required to describe transport of components in materials undergoing glass transition. In the vicinity of glass transition the flow behavior becomes non-Fickian. It can be shown that the Fick's law can be obtained from the Maxwell-Stephen equations of multi-component mass transfer. The Fick's law is limiting case of the Maxwell-Stephen equations. When the mixture is extremely dilute and every chemical species is interacting only with the bulk mixture and not with other species. To account for the presence of multiple species in a non-dilute mixture, several variations of the Maxwell-Stephen equations are used. See also non-diagonal coupled transport processes. Biological perspective The first law gives rise to the following formula, in which is the permeability, an experimentally determined membrane, conductance, for a given gas at a given temperature, is the difference in concentration of the gas across the membrane for the direction of flow. Fig's first law is also important in radiation transfer equations. However, in this context it becomes inaccurate where the diffusion constant is low and the radiation becomes limited by the speed of light rather than by the resistance of the material the radiation is flowing through. In this situation, one can use a flux limiter. The exchange rate of a gas across a fluid membrane can be determined by using this law together with Graham's law. Fig's flow in liquids when two miscible liquids are brought into contact and diffusion takes place. The macroscopic concentration evolves following Fig's law. On a mesoscopic scale, that is, between the macroscopic scale described by Fig's law and molecular scale, where molecular random walks take place, fluctuations cannot be neglected. Such situations can be successfully modeled with Landau-Lifshitz fluctuating hydrodynamics. In this theoretical framework, diffusion is due to fluctuations whose dimensions range from the molecular scale to the macroscopic scale. In particular, fluctuating hydrodynamic equations include a fixed flow term, with a given diffusion coefficient, along with hydrodynamics equations and stochastic terms describing fluctuations. When calculating the fluctuations with a perturbative approach, the zero-order approximation is fixed law. 
The first order gives the fluctuations, and it comes out that fluctuations contribute to diffusion. This represents somehow a tautology, since the phenomena described by a lower order approximation is the result of a higher approximation. This problem is solved only by renormalizing the fluctuating hydrodynamics equations. Semiconductor fabrication applications integrated circuit fabrication technologies, model processes like CVD, thermal oxidation, and wet oxidation, doping, etc., use diffusion equations obtained from fixed law. In certain cases, the solutions are obtained for boundary conditions such as constant source concentration diffusion, limited source concentration, or moving boundary diffusion. Derivation of fixed laws. Fig's first law in one dimension, the following derivation is based on a similar argument made in Berg 1977. Consider a collection of particles performing a random walk in one dimension with length scale and time scale. Let be the number of particles at position at time. At a given time step, half of the particles would move left and half would move right. Since half of the particles at point move right and half of the particles at point move left the net movement to the right is the flux J is this net movement of particles across some area element of area A normal to the random walk during a time interval. Hence we may write, multiplying the top and bottom of the right hand side by and rewriting, we obtain we note that concentration is defined as particles per unit volume, and hence, in addition, is the definition of the diffusion constant in one dimension. Thus our expression simplifies to, in the limit where is infinitesimal, the right-hand side becomes a space derivative. Fix second law Fix second law can be derived from fix first law in the mass conservation in absence of any chemical reactions. Assuming the diffusion coefficient d to be a constant, we can exchange the orders of the differentiation and multiply by the constant, and, thus, receive the form of the Fick's equations as was stated above. For the case of diffusion in two or more dimensions Fick's second law becomes, which is analogous to the heat equation. If the diffusion coefficient is not a constant, but depends upon the coordinate and or concentration, Fick's second law yields an important example is the case where is at a steady state, i.e., the concentration does not change by time, so that the left part of the above equation is identically zero. In one dimension with constant, the solution for the concentration will be a linear change of concentrations along. In two or more dimensions we obtain which is Laplace's equation, the solutions to which are referred to by mathematicians as harmonic functions. History In 1855, physiologist Adolf Fick first reported his now well-known laws governing the transport of mass through diffusive means. Fick's work was inspired by the earlier experiments of Thomas Graham, which fell short of proposing the fundamental laws for which Fick would become famous. The Fick's law is analogous to the relationships discovered at the same epoch by other eminent scientists. Darcy's law, Ohm's law, and Fourier's law. Fick's experiments dealt with measuring the concentrations and fluxes of salts diffusing between two reservoirs through tubes of water. It is notable that Fick's work primarily concerned diffusion in fluids, because at the time, diffusion in solids was not considered generally possible. Today, Fick's laws form the core of our understanding of diffusion in solids, liquids, and gases. When a diffusion process does not follow Fick's laws, we refer to such processes as non-Fickian, in that they are exceptions that prove the importance of the general rules that Fick outlined in 1855.